Good morning. This is Bruce Queen, the Intentional Interim Minister at First Baptist Church in Woodstock. It's Sunday, April the 5th, 2020, and we are still in the middle of a coronavirus pandemic and are practicing social distancing. So this is our opportunity to worship online on our website and on Facebook. So I hope that all of you are doing well. Of course, we're not in our sanctuary at First Baptist Church, uh, but we are doing our best to help not spread the coronavirus to uh, especially those who we care about, those that are most vulnerable. I pray that your family and friends are well, uh, as are mine. Uh, I know that we miss seeing each other and worshiping together, and we will again and let's pray that God will let that be soon. This Sunday is Palm Sunday and next week is Easter. I propose that we wait until we are able to gather again in our sanctuary again to celebrate Easter and to give this very holy day and the celebration uh, the joy it deserves. After the social distancing has been lifted, we'll set a date several weeks beyond to prepare a proper Easter celebration. Please remember to continue to send your tithes and offerings to the church. They will be processed and recorded. Uh, though we are not able to utilize our building at this time, the costs of our congregation are still there. We all know that we're in the midst of an ever-increasing coronavirus pandemic, which has caused much of our world to practice a very strict staying at home and social distancing. The United States has now surpassed the other countries of the world in coronavirus cases. Deaths in places like New York City are staggering. Even the hospital where my wife works in Mechanicsville, Virginia, has had to triple the space it uses for coronavirus isolation in the last week. In Richmond City, hospitals are adding emergency space for thousands, and this is happening all over the United States. What we can do at this point is to pray, and so let's pray together. O oh God, we come to you this morning and give you honor and glory forever and ever. We give you praise because you are the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only wise God. We come this morning during these difficult times across the world and in our country and our community to confess our anxiety and fear at this ever-widening pandemic. Your word tells us, the Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, from those, for those words from Philippians chapter 4. And so let our prayers of confession for our anxiety and fear be replaced by the peace of God. We pray for you to guard our hearts and minds during this terrible time in our world. We pr pray for those not only in our country, but all over the world that have been afflicted with this virus. We pray for you to give consolation for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for our congregation as we are isolated from one another. And help us not to lose hope, but to know that you will bring this devastation to an end. We look forward in faith to the time when we can meet together again in our sanctuary and in one voice worship and praise you. We pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon is about Jesus Christ's humility and his greatness, and it's from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. This is a remarkable early Christian, it's either poetry or a hymn, maybe even a creed, and it has its original context in worship, where ultimately all good theology belongs. 
the intent uh, is to praise God. It is to invite the congregation to join in bowing in the confession of Jesus' Lordship. This is a powerful narration of the meaning of the Christ event and the example he set for the attitude of the life of the Christian community. I'm going to read this text from Philippians from the new RSV, and the reason I'm doing that is because it keeps a lot of the original poetic structure. So hear this text from Philippians 2. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but in the interest of others. Let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though was he is he though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. But he emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May God bless the reading of his word. The attitude of Christ that it talks about in verse 5 exhorts a, a lifestyle pattern after the self-chosen humiliation of Jesus. That attitude is attention to the needs of others instead of ourselves. And of course that exemplifies the character of Jesus' life and provides the content for the obedience to which Jesus' followers are called. I know that this social distancing and stay at home uh, has, as a result of the coronavirus is very difficult. And it may seem uh, that we're going too far to some of you, and I've heard from some of you. But it's for the common good of everyone. For Christians, it is Christ's attitude of the attention of the needs of the others that shows the character of Christ in us, and by us giving up our being together so that others, especially those who are most vulnerable, wouldn't get this virus, even though you may not, or if you had the symptoms, it wouldn't be bad. Others are dying because of this virus. And so we are looking to the needs of others in not having church services in our sanctuary. You see, our entire identity is to be shaped by Christ's self-giving attitude. What did Jesus give up in verse 6? It's a clear statement by Paul of the deity of Christ. In his pre-incarnate state, Christ possessed all the attributes of God. Jesus appeared to those in heaven who saw him as God. But he emptied himself of this heavenly state, a thing not to be grasped, which means something held onto as by robbery. So what did Jesus empty himself of in his voluntary humiliation? Of course, not of his divine nature, because that was impossible. Jesus continued to be one with God, the Son of God, the one who would flesh and blood God's life and be revealed to humanity. Undoubtedly, Christ gave up the environment of heaven and glory and took him upon himself the limitations of space, place, and of some knowledge and power, I'm not sure about how much or how little, and I'm not going to worry about it. But while he was on earth, he retained more of these than had any man. According to some writers, they said he stripped himself of the insignia of majesty, as if he took off the crown or took off the badge that showed who he was as God. Paul is pressing upon the Philippians the model in Christ's supreme example of renunciation. In humility, Jesus left heaven, and all that that means, and became a man, which would mean that he would die as a man, for God to die as a man. 
for Jesus God to come as a human being and die would have been enough. And yet the death on the cross was the bottom rung of the ladder from the throne of God. And you see, to a Jew, to be hung on a tree was the absolute worst thing that could ever happen and would label you as the lowest rung of the ladder. But Jesus came all the way down to the most despised death of all, a condemned criminal on an accursed cross, a tree. Humility is often misinterpreted in our culture as meekness that equals weakness. But in this context, humility is radically different from both self-deprecation and false modesty. You see, putting oneself down, thinking ill of ourselves, or playing a character that, uh, that you're really not so gifted as others, it really mocks the intent of this text. Uh, Jesus' model of self-emptying that fulfilled his true vocation was to give himself to attend to the needs of an enslaved humanity, enslaved to sin. He resisted the temptation to follow an easier, easier calling. And what humbling oneself in Christ's model, model does is to condemn a self-preoccupation that ignores or prevents true involvement in the life of others. The point here is that Christ is the decision maker. He chose not to cling to his divine privilege, but chose instead to enter into the enslaved human life. He never flinches, but obediently follows the divine will, even to being crucified on a cross. Death as a human being would have been enough, but death on a cross. God's responding activity to Jesus' humility and obedience is making Jesus' name exalted above all other names. The confession of Him as Lord would be a universal one. Because of Jesus' voluntary and supreme humility, God exalts Him. God lifted Jesus above or beyond the state of glory which He had enjoyed even before the Incarnation. Well, what glory did Jesus have after the ascension that he did not have before in heaven? What did he take back to heaven that he did not bring with him? Clearly, his humanity. He returned to heaven, the Son of Man as well as the Son of God. What is the name which is above every name? Apparently and naturally, it is the name Jesus, which will forever have supreme power. The Philippian audience was suffering for the sake of the gospel. They knew only too well, as do we, that all knees had not yet bent in obedience to Christ, nor had all lips yet confessed Jesus as Lord. They, like Jesus, were living in a violent world and were facing opposition without anything that could happen to them that they saw any way out. What would make a difference in their situation? It was worship that helped shape their life and mold their expectations. Each Sunday, the congregation would rehearse the promise that if they lived out Christ's humility in service, that they too would be exalted, regardless of the persecution that they were now going through. It was in worship of Jesus, in his scandalous death, that they realized it was his example which must characterize every Christian's life. The future was then and still is in the hands of the servant Lord. Emptying oneself of what may be rightfully ours and giving ourselves to others in Christ's service is both our humiliation and our exaltation. In giving ourselves to Christ and serving him in voluntary humiliation, self-emptying, we do not meet our end, but our exaltation in Christ. We take on the character of Jesus, whom God highly exalted because of his voluntary self-humiliation and self-giving. It reminds me of that wonderful hymn, O oh, to be like thee by Thomas Chisholm. O oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, 
This is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of earth's treasures. Jesus, thy perfect likeness to wear. And the chorus, O oh, to be like thee. O oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness. Come in thy fullness. Stamp thine own image deep on my heart. O oh, to be like thee, full of compassion, loving, forgiving, tender, and kind, helping the helpless, cheering the fainting, seeking the wandering sinners to find. O oh, to be like thee, lowly in spirit, holy and harmless, patient and brave, meekly enduring cruel reproaches, willing to suffer others to save. O oh, to be like thee, Lord, I am coming now to receive thy anointing divine. All that I am and have I am bringing. Lord, from this moment all shall be, thee, shall be thine. O oh, to be like thee, while I am pleading, pour out thy spirit, fill with thy love. Make me a temple, meet for thy dwelling, fit for a life which thou wouldst approve. O oh, to be like thee, O oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness, come in thy fullness. Stamp thine own image deep on my heart. We're going to leave this time together in a few moments. I hope we've been encouraged by the presence of the Lord. And let's decide to give ourselves to others as did Christ. Let's close together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me as we all find ourselves isolated. Uh, let us pray that this isolation bears the fruit of slowing the spread of this virus. If you have a need of me, call me, email me, contact your deacon. We'll do whatever is possible to, to meet your need. May God bless you until we meet again. I hope we'll see each other again on Facebook or online next week. God bless. Goodbye.